On her accession in 1837, Queen Victoria declined the role of Colonel-in-Chief of the three regiments of her household cavalry on the grounds that she was a woman. The post remained vacant until 1880 when she appointed the Prince of Wales, the future King Edward VII, to all three colonelcies. Notorious for her long absences from the public gaze after the death of the Prince Consort in 1861, Queen Victoria acquired the nickname of the Widow of Windsor. However, in 1897, she was persuaded to appear in public for her Diamond Jubilee, the principal event of which was a royal procession from Buckingham Palace to St Paul's Cathedral for a service of thanksgiving. This service was held in the open air at the foot of the steps of the west transept, an unusual arrangement which was necessary because the elderly, lame and overweight Queen was unable to climb the long flight of steps into the cathedral. It was a proposal that did not please everyone. Has one ever heard of such a thing? wrote an outraged Princess Augusta of Cambridge, Grand Duchess of Mecklenburg Strelitz, to her niece, the Duchess of York, the future Queen Mary. After sixty years' reign, to thank God in the street? The route to the cathedral, then back to the palace via Lambeth, was six miles long. It was lined all the way in blazing sunshine by shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder uniformed soldiers and sailors, something we couldn't do today, whilst the royal procession itself consisted of 17 horse-drawn carriages, dozens of the Queen's royal and imperial relations from across Europe, and assorted princely rulers from within the empire all mounted, and 8,000 representatives of the cavalry of the empire. It was probably the largest number of horses ever to have appeared as one formation on London's streets. The Sovereign's escort for this vast equestrian parade was provided by the 2nd Lifeguards under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Cochrane, 12th Earl of Dundonald, that's him on the right. Riding immediately behind the Queen's open semi-state landor, Lord Dundonald had trouble controlling his charger and repeatedly tried to calm her by saying, Steady old girl! Whoa, old girl! For the early part of the procession, Queen Victoria thought that he was talking to her and was most certainly not amused. This unintentional act of Lay's Majesty may have prevented Dundonald's name from appearing in the Diamond Jubilee Honours List. The Earl had earlier distinguished himself on the Nile Expedition, otherwise known as the Relief of Gordon, in 1884 to 1885, during which he was in the Heavy Camel Regiment and was severely injured when an ammunition box dropped on top of him. His reputation may not have been further enhanced when, whilst commanding the Second Lifeguards, he was known as an innovator of military equipment which was not a quality then prized by the War Office. Dundonald's inventions included a wheeled, horse-drawn machine gun, shown on the left, a waterproof bag for hauling men across rivers, a hand warmer, and an improved teapot. The Earl lost his military reputation altogether in the Second Boer War, when, without authorization from the War Office, and at his own expense, he travelled out to South Africa, where the then Commander-in-Chief, General Sir Redvers Buller, shown on the right, tasked him with organising and commanding the Mounted Brigade of the South Natal Field Force. For his inept leadership of this brigade during the relief of Ladysmith, Dundonald earned himself the contemptuous sobriquet of Dundoodle. After command of the militia in Canada during the First World War, the Earl was made chairman of the Admiralty Committee on Smoke Screens, an appropriate appointment given his reputation for innovation and his childhood dream of serving in the Royal Navy. Also on duty on the Queen's carriage during the Diamond Jubilee Royal Procession was a 75-year-old gold stick-in-waiting and Colonel of the Second Lifeguards, 
Major General Richard Curzon Howe, 3rd Earl Howe. Despite his age, Lord Howe was correctly uniformed in his Second Lifeguards Mounted Review Order, consisting of jack boots, leather pantaloons, quilted tunic, steel cuirasses, leather gauntlets, a heavy sword, and a silver plated helmet. Although, unlike Lord Dundonald, Lord Howe had no problem with his mount, on the return leg of the procession, he was overcome by the heat, fainted, and fell off his horse. A painful event that was repeated on the Mall at the end of the Queen's Birthday Parade in 2018 by the 79-year-old Colonel of the Lifeguards, Field Marshal Lord Guthrie. In 1897, Lord Howe was the only man on the parade to fall off, but his unauthorised dismount didn't prevent him being awarded a GCVO in the Diamond Jubilee Honours List, albeit for his royal service as Lord Lieutenant of Leicestershire rather than for his ability to remain in the saddle. This was an honour that was also bestowed upon Lord Guthrie when he retired as Colonel of the Lifeguards in 2019. I hope you've enjoyed this video, which is drawn from stories in my book, The Drum Horse in the Fountain, which is available on Amazon. Thank you very much for watching.